Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are out for our morning stroll. We have not, uh, it's a little later in the day. I've been sleeping in, yeah. Not much to report on the trial front today, but, oh, there he is back there, look. <laughs> I'll put the animal segment into the show somewhere. You'll see it, stay tuned. Hey everybody, Crafting Journey here, that journey chick on Instagram. Welcome to another edition of Crafting and Crime Daily. First, let me apologize for yesterday. It was a crazy day. Man, I got up at 5 a.m. because I knew that this Wagner trial was on the East Coast. I'm in Central Time, so I got up an hour earlier than I usually do because I wanted to do my morning routine, you know, walk the dog. It probably it was probably more than like 6 a.m. when I woke up. Time is like when you're retired now, like time just doesn't mean anything. It's just something I'm trying to get used to. My sister's like, relax. I'm like, I can't relax. You know, I've got things to do. <laughs> so, um, so I get up you know, make my coffee, walk the dogs, can't find Stitch, don't know where Stitch is, so he did, so I didn't do any footage of the animals, because I don't know where Stitch is, you guys have seen the dogs, <sighs> crazy day, so I had done a, you know, a thumbnail with a live notification that I would go live at 8 30 Eastern, you know, when the opening statements were supposed to be for the Wagner trial, so, you know, 8.15 comes Eastern time, 17, 7.15, my time now. I've, done, I've walked the dogs. I've made the coffee. I'm ready to go. Speaking of coffee, un momento. I, I'm like, where, where's the feed? <laughs> there's no feed from this courtroom. There's no thumbnail. There's no nothing on any channel. Not court TV, not long crime, not, nothing. So I Google it. I, I ask Google and I get told that the trial has been delayed and will actually start on September 12th because the special prosecutor is ill. So I quickly canceled the live, put up a community post. I, a lot of you are not reading these community posts. I do put a lot of updates and information into the community posts. So if you could check those out sometimes, um, you might figure out what's going on <laughs> but so then I'm like oh, now it's 7 30 I'm wide awake well I wasn't wide awake so I said my ass is going back to bed and I went back to bed uh then I get up I'm talking to Mickey I'm trying to talk through with her some you know, I'm some angst that I'm having over, you know, the new business, the, the YouTube channels, the, you know, I'm trying, trying whatever I can to see if it'll stick. You know, I've, there's all these new videos out with the new YouTube algorithm and you need to do this and you need to do that. And this is going to make your channel grow. And, uh, none of it's working. In fact, people are unsubscribing. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. We're just going to go back to what we were doing before and what, whatever the heck with it. But people are really, really enjoying the leftover channel. I put up a new video yesterday on that channel. The link is down in the description. Check that out. And while we're on this channel, don't forget to hit the like button. He's feeling very neglected lately. Um, I wanted him to run the vacuum yesterday and he was like, nope, I'm just going to stay in my room. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, he's kind of pouting because, you know, the people that unsubscribed, he feels, you know, kind of left out. So I said, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> it's, you know, people are just not enjoying my content. So for those of you that do, I seriously, seriously appreciate it. I will keep doing it for you, um, you know, till the, till the last of you leaves the building <laughs> and then I'll shut the channel off. Um, but... <sighs> You know, it is what it is. I, I guess, you know, there are blonder, more beautiful, dynamic people out there making videos that people want to watch and they don't want to watch me. But that's okay. Um, that was depressing. <laughs> All right. I'm working on my uh, diamond painting. I'm in the home stretch. 
look, I just got this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I'm working on the eighth release section. The the size of those release pa the size of these release papers to go, which is pretty incredible since uh, the, there was a lot of release papers on this painting. Um, let me show you before I get started diamond painting though, where I was at the other day. Yeah, I told you I got this really cool new watercolor book. This is by Sarah Berenson, step-by-step -step tutorials for 50 flowers, wreaths, and bouquets. I can't wait to get to the bouquets. I'm still working on individual flowers, but um, I've gotten a lot of these different watercolor books, and many of them I have just returned to Amazon. But this one I am really, really enjoying. So let me show you a couple of the flowers that I tried um, here recently. Oh my gosh, she's even got vases that you can do. <gasps> so cool. Look at the vases. Isn't that neat? She's got a chin... Ch Chinoaseri, I'm probably butchering that name base. So pretty. It's like a white and blue with flowers. Oh my gosh. A metal pale newspaper. That's cool. Okay. I got to try these. All right. So one of the, I'm starting on the first one. So this is one that I tried. So there, and she gives you the step-by-step -step instructions, what brush to use, you know, what, what to do. But frankly, you're pretty much on your own. You just got to kind of look at it and see if you can recreate it. Um, where's that one? This is, but I did this one in different colors. It's the same flower. Here is the colors they used in the book. Here are some other colors I added in. Some purple, some blues. Um, yeah. I think it turned out pretty cool. And I'm loving the colors. Then, let's see what else do we do. Uh, okay, this one was A-N-E-M-O-N-E. -E, anemone. Anemone. That's this one here. Here is my attempt. <laughs> I think, it, there it is, right on the back. Anemone. Yeah. So, I actually like that one. Then... What are the other ones? I did a couple more. This was my first attempt at one that I showed it to Mickey. She's like, no, that's not good. Try again. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But, you know, she gave me some suggestions of how to improve it. Now, let me find that flower. Okay, here was that flower. Hydrangea. So here is the hydrangea. Isn't that gorgeous? So here is my attempt at the hydrangea. I think it came out pretty cool. So I'm loving these new flowers in the book. So this is a fantastic book. Um, it is available on Amazon. So. so today I plan to go sourcing. I'm learning these new terms, these like yard sale terms, these reselling terms. When you go out to find merchandise, you are sourcing. So we're going to go source some Goodwills. I want to find, I want to go to Goodwill out in a little, a town called Mays, uh, Kansas, which is also a little bougie. So yeah, we're going to go there. I have also, oh, there's two different colors in here. Uh-oh, what happened? Oh no. Oh no. What can the matter be? I see what happened. Some of this color got into this color. Well, I know which one it is. So N is the gray, U is the, that's gonna take some thought. So um, we're gonna put that aside for later. <laughs> but at least I know which is which. All right, we're gonna do this color here. And the reason I have it in the container already or in the tray already is because this container was full. I took the last little extra bag and poured it in here. Okay. Um, where was I? What was I going to tell you? Oh, last night. I tried to watch Netflix and it kept shutting off on me. I you know, they have a new Call the Midwife, season 11, just started. See, so I'm like, oh, great, season 11. I've watched all 10 seasons. So season 11 
you know, we get to, you know, the beginning and it opens and it shuts off. I'm like, what? So I started again, the beginning openings and then it shuts off. Okay. I, I don't know what that's about. It does this to me sometimes, Netflix. I pay my Netflix bill, but you know, whatever. So I go, I'm going to watch Hulu. So first thing I get on Hulu is price increase. We're increasing the price. I'm like, oh, of course you are. <laughs> you know, I'm, un I'm unemployed. You're going to increase the price. So I'm looking through there for something to watch and I see you've got mail. Well, first I see Hope Floats. These two movies are my absolute favorite movies of all times. I have seen them hundreds of times. Hope Floats with Sandra Bullock and Harry Connick Jr. <sighs> when the rain is blowing in your face and the whole world is on your case, I can offer you a warm embrace to make you feel my love. Oh, sorry. I'm going to copyright strike for that. That's an oldie, oldie but goodie. Um, and then you've got mail. I'm like, oh, which one do I watch? So I put on you've got mail. Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan. Like, it, it's it's so funny. It brings back so many memories from the 80s where like where with the dial up, you know, you press, you know, the dial up and you hear you know, that that sound and it connects and then it says you've got mail <laughs> more in my case, no mail. Uh, <laughs> so love that movie. I love that movie. Shop Around the Corner. I think it's based on a book called Shop Around the Corner. Um, yeah. Great movie. Great movie. So, of course, I was up till two in the morning watching this great movie. Yeah. Why am I starting to watch a movie at two o'clock in the morning? Because my sleep schedule is so thrown off. My, I'm you know, I love to sleep during the day. Sleeping during the day, I was up sorting these auction items. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Go down and watch the new video. You'll see what I got at this auction. Sorting this stuff out for hours, pricing it. I still got to get pictures and get it listed, but I got it all written out. I've got it all priced, um, and I stand to make a pretty good amount of money. Then I'm, I'm, after that, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to diamond paint. I made two sales in the last two days. I'm so excited. My first sales and they were big ticket items. I was shocked. I list, I got this at a garage sale. Both of these items I got at garage sales. One was a Carl Edwards uh, die cast model car, new in the box. I listed it for 45. Someone offered me 35. I paid 25. I'm like, I was so excited. I'm like, oh, sold, sold. Okay, you know, I got a sale. I didn't mind. He's paying for the shipping. I made 10 bucks. Then last night or yesterday, um, the last thing I listed for the day, I thought, oh, I, you know, I had started to list these the day that I got them. And some, for some reason I got interrupted. So I said, oh, let me finish this listing because it was the last listing I did yesterday. And it was these, um, hold on. It was a set of kitchen knives with a cooking thermometer in the case, brand new, never been used with a little cookbook that goes with it. And I could see that there were just tons of these things on eBay. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to hold out any great hope. There, there are so many of these things listed on eBay. So what do I price them at? The prices were all over the place. So I just said, I paid 10 bucks for it. I listed it at $25.99 with, uh, plus the shipping. And I'm going to say, you know, three, four hours later, I look at eBay and I have an offer. Someone offered me a hundred dollars for those knives. And I'm like, oh, yes, accept, accept. <laughs> hundred dollars for uh, so I'm gonna be looking out for kitchen knives <laughs> they were it's it's a set of knives that came from this company called the trusted butcher which I understand they were sold out of on Amazon and they were sold out of on Wayfair 
those are the two places you could get those knives and they were sold out so apparently very popular <laughs> knives so i was excited about that So about not filming yesterday, so I go, like I said, I went back to sleep and then I had like, what, I said, what am I going to talk about? My plan yesterday was to sit with you guys while we watched the opening statements. I had no plans, no stories, no, nothing, you know, researched, nothing to talk to you about. But today I have a story for you and I don't know what has happened to the Nicholas Cruz trial. It is not there. Um, I, I know it, they're not done with it. I get, I'm guessing the judge gave him more time off. She has given this jury so much time off. I'm sure they feel like they are never going to be done with this case. I feel so bad for these jurors. Although I think if I were one of the jurors, I would probably want to write a book about my experience as a juror on this case because of everything that they've gone through. They've been sitting as jurors now for a couple of months. It's crazy with all the time off. And even when they're in session, it's like, you know, they get long breaks, long lunches, they leave early. I mean, I don't, I don't get this judge. I, I would want to get it over with. I've seen these type trials in Florida and they're, you know, they're over and done with in a couple of days, <laughs> not weeks and weeks and weeks. Maybe a week, two weeks at the most, but this is just drug on and on and on. Now, it may be because one of the jurors had said, hey, I have plans over Labor Day. I'm going to visit, you know, my Aunt Harriet or whatever. And the judge's like, okay, we're going to give you that week off. Bye. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to tell you about the case of Eliza Fletcher. I don't know if you guys follow the news, you probably know about this story. Uh, this is a recent story. This 34 year old mom, Eliza Fletcher, she goes out. She's a mother of two. She's married to a guy named Richie. They live on the, uh, in Memphis on this college campus. She's a preschool teacher. She goes out at 4 a.m. for her regular morning run. First of all, I am not getting up at 4 a.m. Even when I was a runner, I did not get up at 4 a.m. for my regular morning run. But I th I'm thinking this triple digit, he digit heat just has us doing everything at night and not during the day. This heat is ridiculous. It's September. I'm getting off topic. Anyway, so she's out at 4 o'clock in the morning. She's got this beautiful little pink top on, you know, crop jogging top and little purple shorts and her running shoes and she's jogging around the campus and she never comes home so about 6 30 her husband Richie says you know where she should be back by now she's got to get the kids off to school she's got to get to her job where is she she calls the police meanwhile a bicyclist on the campus he sees he stops, finds a cell phone that's damaged, and he turns it over to the family. He gives it to the family, and the family turns it over to the police. And it was found near the location where there was an altercation. So what the police do is they go to the campus security. They get footage of, they finally, you know, they find footage around the time that she was jogging, and they see that she gets into this struggle with this man in a dark SUV that's later identified to be a GMC terrain. She's, she gets into this struggle with him. She drops her cell phone, water bottle, and he loses his slip-on shoes. But he gets her after he gets her during this struggle in, into his vehicle. He forces her into the vehicle and then he sits in the parking lot with her for four minutes. Now, nobody knows what was going on for four minutes, but also what they discover on this footage is prior to the abduction. Now, the police have not shown this abduction footage. We They've shown footage of her that, like running. Um, they've not shown footage of, of the guy that abducted her, but we see footage of the vehicle footage of her running. That's what they've released. Also, what they see on this footage, 
when they go back in time is that this vehicle was waiting in this parking lot for 24 minutes before she jogs by and he gets out and abducts her. So did he know her? It turns out she was the heiress to $3 million. She was standed to inherit $3 million from her grandfather's hardware store business. So she was going to come into some money, which begs the question, was this husband involved in some way? And it's something that I had said my, to my sister the first time I saw it on the news, because they showed a close-up of him being emotional. And he was the tears did not look real. You know how they always suspect the husband. I always suspect the husband. You know, rumors are that this was not a good marriage, that he may have been having an affair with the nanny, um, that they were separated. Who knows? But after she it goes missing, you know, of course, the first thing they do is search the Fletcher home uh, where she and her husband live. They come out with a computer, some clothing and some gardening shears. Nobody knows what that's about. But the following day, we find out there's an arrest. They've identified the vehicle as a GMC terrain. Here's how they made the arrest. The sandals that were left at the abduction site, they ran DNA, put that through the CODIS at the police, and this guy comes up, Cleotha Abstin, who had served 20 years for doing a kidnapping when he was 16 years old. He abducted an attorney from the courthouse threw the guy in the trunk of his car and then drove him to the ATM where he was going to make him withdraw some money. But while he's parked at the ATM, someone hears the guy screaming from the trunk and he gets caught and he serves 20 years for this. So, of course, his DNA is in the system. So they go and they arrest him. And, of course... He's living with a woman who happens to have this GMC terrain that he's been driving, which matches the vehicle seen on the footage. Then the brother of Cleotha comes forward and he says, listen, he came over to my house about 7.40 a.m. Uh, on Friday and he was using cleaning fluid to clean out the truck, the GMC. And I thought it was kind of strange, and he was acting strange. And then he came in the house, and he's scrubbing scrubbing his clothing, and he's still acting strange. So he's arrested, but he's not talking. They're, everybody's like, where is she? What would you do with her? Not talking. And I forgot to mention, someone at McDonald's, a worker at McDonald's, finds... Eliza's clothing. She finds the pink top, the purple shorts. So now we don't know where she is, but sh wherever she is, she's not got her clothes on. We also learn that in the attempts to stop this guy and arrest him, he attempted to flee. So he was arrested and charged on multiple charges. So on Monday evening, they find the body of Eliza. She is in the backyard of an abandoned home in the neighborhood of Cleotha's brother. And that's everything we know about this case so far. But I think the plot's going to thicken. I think there's a reason why he's not talking. Was he hired to do something? You know, something's fishy about this. This does not seem random. The fact that he waited in the parking lot for 24 minutes till she drove, till she jogged by. Did he know who she was? Did he know she had money? But he never makes a ransom demand. He just kills her and leaves her. So, sad, sad case. So before we get to this day in history, we're going to take a break and we're going to see the animals. Here they are.
So in 1996, Tupac Shakur is shot. He was an actor and hip-hop recording artist. He was attending a boxing match in Las Vegas, Nevada. He was riding in a white Cadillac sedan with Death Row Records founder Marion Knight. When another vehicle pulls up alongside of the sedan, starts firing into Shakur's car. The guy that he was with, Knight, head of Death Records, he was just grazed in the head, but Tupac Shakur was shot several times and um, taken to the hospital where he passed away several days later. Now, here's the interesting part. His killer was never identified. They never found him. It's believed that Shakur's killer was this guy named Anderson, Orlando Anderson, a member of the Los Angeles gang, the Crips. Earlier in the lobby of the MGM Grand Hotel, before the, you know, big heavyweight fight that night, Suge, who's head of Death Row Records and a group of people from Death Row Records, had attacked Anderson and the Crips. So this was thought to be retaliation for that. So now Suge was out on probation. He goes back to jail to serve a nine-year sentence. Tupac Shakur's mother sues Anderson for the death of her son, but she never gets justice because Anderson is killed before that could happen. He's shot to death in a shootout at an at a Los Angeles car wash. How crazy is all that? Oh my gosh! Okay, that's the day in history. I hope I got that one right because who did what to whom and when and uh, wow. And everybody ended up dead. So that's the show for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please don't forget to hit the like button. It does help the algorithm, according to the experts. And I appreciate it, really, I do. Please consider subscribing, becoming a member to help support the content of the channel. And don't forget to hit all on the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode of Crafting and Crime Daily. Now, I'm going to be live tonight at 6 p.m. Central for Craft With Me Wednesday. I don't know what craft I'm doing. You guys seem to enjoy the crochet. I'll bring you up to speed where I am on crochet. and um, Or maybe watercolor. Or maybe, I don't know. I haven't loomed it in a long time. My arm is feeling better. There's some crochet projects I need to ca catch up with. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll think about it. Yeah, maybe all three. Yeah, or four, or five. Yeah, I'll see you guys.